praise the Most High. Come, all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come, all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come now and worship the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Each time that God's people gather together for worship, it's intended to be a celebration of some type. Whether it's a celebration of God's word, of Jesus' life and ministry, of the work of the Holy Spirit among us, of things taking place in our hometown or our families or our congregation, or of important moments in life and faith. As you worship on Sunday mornings, do you see this as a time of celebration? Now, perhaps some Sundays it might be easier than others. Like last Sunday, we celebrated our history as people of the Reformation. With many of us wearing red, it felt like a celebration, didn't it? Almost like a birthday party of sorts, even with festive music. Today, we celebrate All Saints Day and the lives of those family members and friends that we have lost, particularly over this last year. We celebrate, but with a very different mood. We deeply acknowledge that many still bear grief because of these losses. And for those of you carrying grief this morning, please know that this community of faith is here to support you, to care for you, and to pray for you. Even though others may not fully know the extent of your grief, we are here to accompany you through this time. I believe that being a part of this Christian community is truly a blessing that we celebrate together today. Have you ever stopped to think about that word, blessing, or the idea of being blessed? It's a word that we tend to use a lot in the English language and for a few different reasons. It can mean a special favor or mercy or benefit. It can mean a gift from God that brings joy. It can mean the prayer that we share before a meal. It could also mean approval or good wishes. Therefore, people who are blessed or blessed are considered fortunate or held in high esteem. In the language of faith, you could say that God's favor is upon them. So, then, who are the blessed according to Jesus in today's gospel passage? Because we're given many examples in this well-known passage, which is also known as the Beatitudes. Jesus, standing on the side of the mountain, addresses the crowds who have gathered to hear him teach. He told them, Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, and for you when you are persecuted and when evil is uttered against you. But this is where it tends to get a little tricky. What if you wouldn't describe yourself as being poor in spirit, or meek, or pure in heart? What if you don't ache with hunger and thirst for righteousness? What if you don't always do what it takes to truly strive for peace? What if you are the one persecuting others? or uttering evil against them. Have you missed the mark? Are you not worthy of God's blessing? And I think that for many Christians, the feeling of not being worthy of God's blessing ends up being the takeaway from this passage. 
But I also think that that's absolutely incorrect. In our Lutheran tradition, we recognize there is a difference between law and gospel. This law and gospel balance was something that Luther and his fellow reformers emphasized in their teaching of Scripture. Law in the Bible are the verses or passages that identify the ways that we human beings fall short of living according to God's commands or will. They make us realize that we just aren't getting things right, that we are failing to live fully as children of God. Whereas gospel, on the other hand, are the verses or passages in the Bible that remind us that God alone has the power to forgive us of our shortcomings and that through Christ our sins are indeed forgiven. We're given the gift of grace even when we don't deserve it. And ultimately, we are awarded life everlasting in communion with God forever and ever. Amen. Gospel is the promise of all these things. So the lens through which we read this morning's passage drastically changes its impact on our life. Is this law or is this gospel? If we read it as law, then Jesus' statements become a measuring stick that indicate how far off the mark we truly are. The takeaway becomes, I'm not meek enough, or I'm not pure enough in heart, or I don't strive for peace enough. And this is how many, many Christians indeed read this passage as law. <laughs> but what if we read this passage as gospel? I'm going to suggest that we do that this morning. When we read this as gospel, Jesus is giving us examples of those who are lowly, those who don't have much power, the poor in spirit. In God's eyes, they are blessed. Those who mourn, in God's eyes, they are blessed. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the pure in heart, the merciful, the meek, in God's eyes, each of these are blessed. So even if the lowliest, those with the least power or control in this life, those who desire community and friends and support, even if these are blessed by God, would you not also be blessed by God? What Jesus is doing here is laying a foundation for us to understand that, in fact, all of God's children are blessed. It's not only those who are successful or those who have everything going right in their lives or the happiest among us or the wealthy who are blessed. It's the meek and the poor in spirit, too. Because in Jesus' time, much like today, their culture assumed that blessings from God meant success in life. Culturally, blessings were gifts from God that were obvious to the people around them. It's an idea that's still pervasive in our culture today. And there are some Christian churches and preachers that emphasize that idea heavily often at the expense of other significant aspects of our Christian faith. So the takeaway when we read this passage as gospel, as good news, as example of God's grace, first and foremost, it's that you, as a child of God, are favored by God. You, as a child of God, whoever you are and whatever you carry with you this morning, you are favored by God. You have a place in the kingdom of God. Salvation through Christ our Lord is for you. The gift of grace through baptism and the Lord's Supper is for you. Life in Christian community is for you because you are loved and you are important. I think that's the takeaway. We're nevertheless still challenged, of course, to live more fully into God's will for us. Yes, blessed are the peacemakers. 
So let us pray that through God's love for us, we too may strive for peace among our neighbors and in our world. Yes, blessed are the poor in spirit. So let us pray that through our hope in Christ, that we may share it with those who are hopeless. Yes, blessed are those who mourn. So let us pray that through the promise of life everlasting given by Jesus himself, we may boldly accompany those who are shrouded in grief in our midst. Let us pray that we may be blessed by God to truly, meaningfully be a blessing to others. Because blessings from God go farther and deeper than status or wealth or success as culture would ever tell us. Faith is truly among the greatest gifts from God. And our willingness to share that faith is perhaps our greatest gift to others. So may we as a congregation today affirm our commitment to support and encourage and pray for our sisters and brothers in their journeys of faith. May we once again commend to God the names, the memories, and the legacies of our loved ones, now blessed by communing with God forever. And may God bless those who mourn. May we all hear again this day these things. You are a child of God. You have a place in the kingdom of God. Salvation through Christ is for you. The gift of grace through baptism and the Lord's Supper is for you. Life in Christian community is for you. You are loved. You are important. Your journey as one who walks as yet by faith continues this All Saints Sunday with the support of those who surround you, including the great cloud of witnesses who now rest in God's immeasurable grace forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.